Hey everyone, welcome to this City Skylines tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you four cool things you could do with procedural objects that will totally change how you play this game. That will include how to mirror buildings, change an asset's color, to store or change an asset's shape, as well as making custom decals. So to start, we'll be beginning with something pretty simple and something a number of you are already familiar with. As you can see here, we have this nice little piece of road that curves nicely and is very symmetrical. So there's this asset that perfectly fits this. As you can see here, right there, it curves just along the road. But when you copy it, obviously, to the other side, it doesn't fit that way. So in order to fix this, you convert it to procedural objects, go to Advanced Edition Tools, and right there, you can mirror it along any axis you'd like. In our case, it is the Z axis, which is the blue one there. And lastly, you're just going to want to recalculate the normals right there. As you can see, it's not always necessary, but it just ensures that the shadows aren't going to be messed up or you're not going to have any issues with the textures. Uh, it's a small thing, but you'll notice it if it's wrong. And just like that, you have a perfectly symmetrical building that goes along the curve of the road there and something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do without using procedural objects. And it's something you can do in many other ways throughout your city. Next up, we're going to be showing you how to change the color of an asset. In this case, we have this church here, which is very orange. It is an older asset, but I still like it as overall, though the color of the roof I don't like since it matches too closely the color of the actual brick walls. So for this, we're going to be working to change the color of the asset. To do that, you're going to convert it to procedural objects go to text customization and here you have the option to add a text field or add a color rectangle. And what we're going to do is add a color rectangle to the actual texture map which is there on the left side. And as you can see by clicking on the texture map with the color rectangle you have a white little rectangle that shows up and this is how we're going to change the color of the roof. So first you're going to have to kind of zoom in on the texture map and find out where the part is that you want to change the color of here in the roof here. It's on the bottom left side of the texture map. And then you're going to line up the rectangle, adjust the size accordingly so it covers everything. And then you're just going to make sure everything is covered that you want to be covered. I leave it as bright white until everything is good, everything is set. And once everything is covered, then you can adjust the color and also very importantly adjust the opacity which is just the transparency so that way you don't have a just very brightly colored uh, texture and uh, that replaces whatever there was before. So with this I wanted to go with something a little darker but as you can see you can do literally whatever color you'd like uh, but for realism I figured something a little darker uh, closer to maybe a brownish maybe with a little hint of blue something like that. Uh, you'll definitely be able to mess around with it, find the perfect color. As you see here, a little darker, maybe with a hint of blue, and I was pretty comfortable with that. It also matches the spire at the very top of the church pretty closely, so I decided to keep it at that color. Lastly, I also wanted to adjust the colors of these final parts of the church, and you can just store the color, as you can see there, that you wanted to use uh, in the future. And just like that, you can also put it to any other portion of the building. So as you can see, going from that bright orange there to something that's much more natural with this darker roof. It makes all the difference in something I use quite frequently throughout the city. It's only really useful for roofs, as if you use it on any other part of the building, you'll notice it's much more difficult. Next up, I'm going to be showing you how to distort buildings and which I use mostly to make perfect corners. So as you can see here, we have two corners along this road that are not quite 90 degrees and they're a little off. So normally, if you were to place down a building right there, 90 degree building, as you can see, it obviously doesn't line up. So to fix this issue, you're going to convert the building to procedural objects and rather than hitting edit, you're going to go to more and then distort. And just like that, as you can see, the building is now more or less a cube. So rather than the typically hundreds or even thousands of vertices that would show up on an asset under the customization feature, it's reduced to just basically it being a cube. So just like that, you can grab one side and pull it back so that way it fits along the road. 
And like that, whatever degree the road corner is, it can fit perfectly in. So there are a few little things to uh, watch out for. As you see, the building kind of clips into that neighboring one there. So you'll want to adjust it slightly. There are some weird things that can happen. It doesn't work perfectly with all assets, but 90% of them you're able to work out perfectly fine. And just like that, you know, kind of revisiting that portion there and just making sure everything lines up and doesn't clip into anything else. Because that's basically the reason you want to use this technique is to avoid having to clip buildings, which is what you typically normally have to do. So now, since we did one that was less than 90 degrees, I figured I'd also include one that's a little greater than 90 degrees and also a different asset. But just like the previous building, all you do is grab one side and pull it along so it meets up with the road. And just like before, you wanna make sure there's no clipping or any spaces in between buildings. So since there's a little gap there, just go back in and make sure those two walls touch. Another cool thing you can do is use the distort feature to adjust the size or scale of a building. So with this here, since it's a little too big to fit in, we can simply grab one side and make it fit in better. And we can also use it to fill in any spaces behind buildings. So right there, there would have been a very small space between this red roof building and the one behind it. But by using that, distort feature, we can make it so it fits better. So by using this distort feature, you can make any building fit in better, perhaps on awkward corners or filling in between different size spaces. The final thing I'm gonna show you is how you can make your own decals using already existing decals on the Steam Workshop. So here are two examples I have that I use in my own city. You can of course darken or lighten them using procedural objects. And something that I'm sure many of you do is raise and lower the decals. So as you can see here, both of them are able to be lowered. So they only cover the streets and don't show up on the pavement. But only the one on the right is actually able to be raised so it only covers the pavement. The one on the left just kind of fades and doesn't really cover the pavement and what makes it so you really can't use it to cover your sidewalks. So this is pretty useful if you want to kind of change up the texture of your sidewalks and pavement. So you can just simply use this decal here and drag it across so you can change the texture of the street front. However, since you're not going to want to use the same decal over and over again, this technique will allow you to change the texture and make it whatever you'd like. So to do this, you're going to select on the procedural object Convert a decal, go to more, and then select texture. Here is where you'll be able to place your custom textures. In this case, I have a brick texture here. You can of course adjust the color as well. You can use perhaps a pavement texture just like this to break up the monotony, whatever pavement texture you have, or you can use whatever texture you like. So to do this, you're gonna to wanna to go to textures.com and find something you like. In my case, I wanted some sort of cobblestone. So I found a seamless texture. It's important that the texture is seamless. And then I use some sort of photo editor. However, typically I use a free photo editor such as GIMP, but I know many people aren't familiar with that. So I decided to use something that people perhaps are a little more familiar with, and that is PowerPoint. So all you're gonna to need to do is make sure the PowerPoint slide that you're on is a perfect square. You can do such thing like 500 by 500. It really doesn't matter. And then you're just going to place the texture on the slide. You'll want to darken up the texture a bit, as you can see there, maybe increase the texture or contrast a bit, I should say. And what you really want is it to be too dark. So if you think the texture is too dark, then you're on point. That's what you want because in game, everything is gonna be much, much, much lighter. Of course, you can adjust the brightness or darkness in game, but it's nice to have a good starting point. Once you're satisfied with whatever texture you have here, you're going to want to highlight everything. And then once you do, you can then save it as a picture. That way it can come out as a PNG and you can save it in our case, just as stone one. And then once you do save it, you're going to want to open up the picture you have and then resize it. I resize it to 512 by 512. I honestly don't believe it matters for something like this, but what's most important is just to ensure that it is a perfect square. So once you save your picture and make sure it is a perfect square, you're going to want to drag that photo into the proper folder 
and this is where you're going to be able to have all your textures stored so you can use them in game. To get to that folder, you're just going to go back to where you were in game and hit that open folder there and it'll open the appropriate folder. Once you add your texture, you're just going to hit refresh on that same screen there and you can then see your texture in game. So this is the one we just made a second ago, a nice cobblestone. And just like before, you can use procedural objects to drag it across and totally transform the texture of your sidewalks. Now, just like I showed you at the start, not all decals work the same. So some will allow you to do this where they're only showing up on the sidewalk, whereas others kind of fade away uh, like we showed at the start. However, this technique where you can adjust the texture of the decal, you can apply that to any decal you'd like regardless of the size or how it works. So once you find a decal you like, the size, or however it works in game on the sidewalk or street, you can then use this method to change the textures of those decals to be whatever you'd like. But so that's gonna do it for this tutorial. If you're interested in more procedural objects tutorials, visit the links in the description below. And if you're new to this channel, definitely subscribe and you can follow my main series, Berlin Noir. Thanks for watching.